What's up, everybody? We have 10-ish minutes here with Mr. Ruben Allenson across the table and to talk about site height, uh, height over bore, uh, things like that. We get a lot of questions here at Vortex every single day and, and multiple times a day from folks asking, what height rings should I get? And uh, I think that there's a number of things that can go into your decision. There's a number of, a number of different angles you can take as far as sight height goes. Um, just to name a few, one of the ones that I know hits a lot of people's minds right away is, will the objective belt clear on the front yep. end of the gun? There's also shooter comfort, as in how high your scope is, you know, how much of it, what your cheek weld's going to end up being. Um, you know, sight height is something you have to plug into your ballistics uh, solution or your ballistics calculator. It's yep. one of those things that needs to be considered. Um, and then there are some things out there, you know, I know some people are just like, I got to get it as low as possible. And then there's other people out there with ARs and go fast stuff that are kicking doors that say, I got to get it up really high, up above mm-hmm. like two inches above the barrel for all these, or two inches above the rail for that matter. Um, so Rube, what, uh, what do you see when you see sight height? What's, what's really important about it? What are some interesting topics around or interesting points around it. When I was working behind a gun counter, um, you would oftentimes get the, you you know, the question of what height rings do we use? And if we were mounting a scope for a customer, uh, a lot of the times we would, you know, mount it up with a couple of different heights and see what's comfortable. Now, I think there's a a couple of different things to keep in mind. You have like your traditional hunting rifle um, that doesn't have an adjustable stock, or maybe it has just a very low cheek piece on it. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, we're going to get a more consistent zero and have less effects uh, of parallax, especially if the scope is not parallax adjustable. Yeah. If we can get a consistent cheek weld every time. So in that case... You know, I'm just thinking of like a traditional bolt action hunting rifle without an adjustable stock and for sure without an adjustable cheek piece. Let's try and get that as low as we can, as long as it doesn't screw up ejection when we're working the bolt, as long as the bolt doesn't interfere with the scope in any way. Uh, that I'm thinking like, yeah, let's go with that traditional kind of thought process. of let's get the scope as, scope as low as we can uh, over the bore. Mm-hmm. Now, there's also a benefit there. Um, that your zero distance, you know, the zero is a point where, um, you know, your crosshairs and kind of that, that bullet's trajectory cross and you have to kind of pick a distance and you'll get a close zero and a far zero. Um, and typically those zero distances are a little more spread out as we get higher. And then also your height over bore affects, um, your, your, basically your holdover point on your closer distances. Because okay. yes. you're going to have a holdover again under your zero distance. So let's say we're zeroed at 100 yards, and at 50 yards, we're going to be hitting low because that trajectory, um, the barrel, you know, your line of sight is kind of intersecting with your scope again. So mm-hmm. When you yeah. look at, not to bring up actual specific optics, but when you, when you look at the UH-1 Gen 2 with that little triangle reference in the bottom, I mean, that's actually that's one thing that just really helps me see and il- illustrate that point, that that little triangle in the bottom of the reticle is your, yeah. essentially kind of like close your close quarters zero. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's very yeah. evident at super close quarters like you would find with most carbines and stuff like that, most ARs, yep. um, and yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that's kind of weird to think about sometimes is if we were somehow able to put an optic or a crosshair or some way of looking through actually the entire cartridge and bullet and barrel. If, if you aimed through the barrel, you wouldn't have any of this sight over bore talk because obviously your sight would be in yep. the bore. Yep. Um, and in which case you wouldn't have the whole like quote two zeros thing happening. Your bullet wouldn't be on an upward trajectory uh, coming yep. out of the barrel. And it's not to say uh, that bullets actually immediately go upwards as soon as they leave but the barrel. your barrel is pointed up. Your, your line barrel. of sight is pointed up. Exactly. Um, when you think of your rifle as almost like a handheld mini cannon and then yep. you think back to the movies watching where they have artillery that aims up and up and up up to shoot further and further. Um, that's kind of how it works. So you are angling your barrel up in order to, you know, achieve different distances. But, uh, but yeah, I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but usually like going with something, it has to be pretty dramatic, but like a really high sight height might require more adjustment to get zeroed, especially if you're zeroing or trying to zero at a really close distance, um, because you're trying to make up for all that scope over or height. Yep. Um, you know, and uh, I know some people, though, think that there's 
let's get back to the a little bit the get your scope as low as possible. Seems like some people think as though there's almost some inherent inaccuracy of having your scope really high off the gun. Or there's something wrong with it if you were trying to shoot, let's say, right. long range or something. It, it, have you noticed that? Is that kind of a, a little bit of a stigma? There out is. There? Yeah, that's a stigma for sure. That that people have that kind of preconceived notion that uh, by having your scope mounted too high that uh, you're not going to be as accurate or precise at longer ranges. Or maybe um, have enough adjustment or yeah, something. even having enough adjustment. Um, but really what it boils down to is that I think you can look at an example like an AR where someone's running uh, like a 1.93 or a 2.04 height mount for like a low power variable, uh, a red dot, a holographic. Um, and that a lot of the times is, you know, originally like uh, LaRue 1.93 mounts were kind of like at a, they called it like a gas mask height. So you could get actually still looking through the optic wearing a gas mask. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And the same kind of applies to using night vision where you need that sight up a little bit higher. Um, and really, in in my experience, it doesn't affect you beyond your zero distance, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't affect you that much beyond your zero distance. It's a longer but, distance is not a right. huge factor. And, it, and, and in precision rifles, if you're talking of mounting like a rifle to a chassis and it's sitting you know, two inches or more above the bore, that's actually uh, an input that you put in your equation on your ballistic solver. So that's all figured into um, your right. trajectory and your your line of sight. And then... Um, I mean, that's why it's mm-hmm. asking you that question. Yeah, height over bore, yeah. And if you really think about it, or too... sight height. If you think about it as well, like, let's say we're shooting out to that quintessential thousand yards, right? Mm-hmm. And we make an optic height difference of 0.2 inches at the, at the rifle. I mean, you talk about the angle that that's making, you know, or whatever, the, the differences in terms of angles and degrees way down range at mm-hmm. your gun, that small change you made. It's really kind of a moot thing. Um, and we're and this isn't all to say, like, now all of a sudden we're saying get your rifle scope really high. It's it's really you just have to match it to whatever application and you as the shooter yeah. and your gun. Um, so if you kind of think of your, um, your bore... And then you think of your bore of your optic, and then you take a line from the bore of your optic and a line from the bore of your gun, and you draw a triangle out to, you know, a thousand yards. The distance between your optic and your bore compared to that thousand yard distance, it's not changing that triangle very much. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's now, a better way of illustrating yeah. what I was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask this question because, you know, we're talking about, you know, like a lot of guys like, oh, man, I want to get that as low as possible, you know, yeah. on my hunting rifle. And I've seen some where it's like you can get the piece of paper underneath the bell of the objective, but like that is it. And sometimes it's like, well, I can get it through like it's contact. Like it literally is maybe less than a paper width. And mm-hmm. when that, I've seen that gun goes bang, are you going to have issues the, because it is so low of the scope potential like contacting the barrel there, there can be i mean there can be barrel whip it then depends on how far out your objective is in relation mm-hmm. to the barrel but i would say if if you slip a dollar bill between you know there's a chance that it could touch okay under recoil or under those forces because you're not just talking about the barrel whipping you're talking about the gun moving rearward and the optic wanting to stay in place like um you know the objects at rest will tend to stay at rest and objects in motion you know that that whole um that old chestnut. Yeah, there you go. Um, it's one of the laws. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah. So that that optic, it's kind of like the same reason why an optic will slip if the rings aren't tight enough, is because it doesn't want to move. It wants to stay here. So, um, when you have that, there's a chance that that could touch the objective, a bell to the barrel. Now, I'm not saying that if it does, it's, everything's going to break. Right. But I would usually, I mean, like just a very rough redneck estimate, at least a couple sheets of paper between there. Yeah. At least. And 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 that's kind of what we were getting at is it's it's not gonna kill you if you, you know, if you raise it up a little bit. You know, yeah. and that's where I think some people get a little nervous to do so. But and if you if you do, like if if your rifle scope is so it has to get so low in order for you to see well through it. That that is a thing. But in that case, like it, my in my mind, I would think to myself, um you know, on a traditional rifle or something like that that doesn't have an adjustable stock, I would much rather mount my scope in, let's say, a medium ring instead of a low ring or something like that. Mount it in a medium ring and then get a cheek riser Mm -hmm. on the stock. It's removable. It's not going to ruin the classicness of your rifle. It's not going to permanently alter it. 
but get a cheek piece on there. We have like a million Bradley cheek crisps behind us right here. Those are really good ones. Or there's a bunch of slip on kind, whatever. Yeah, grab and uh, that, grab one of those, Rube. I move. Look there's at one right before, behind but... you. It's probably within your cord reach. You're good. But yeah, these ones are adjustable, so they're pretty sweet. Um, and and they just allow you to get your face up in the right spot to be behind the scope, which not only aids in like you were saying earlier, Rube. Uh, eliminating parallax error, especially if you have a scope without parallax adjustment. But also image quality is a huge thing. Like yeah. if you're on a really high power and you're not in the right spot you behind be, the scope, yeah. you're going to see a lot of milkiness in the image. And Yeah, you want to be looking through the center of the optic yeah. um, right in the middle of the exit pupil. And I will say this too as, um, you know, as a hunter, as a marksman, whatever angle you want to look at it, uh, you, you want to be looking through the center of the optic to see your full field of view, but also target acquisition, also being able to call your shot under recoil. If you're, if you're shouldering a rifle and your head or your cheek isn't positioned in a place where it can stay consistently, under, re under recoil, you're going to lose the whole image unless you yeah. can get you know a decent mm -hmm. like chin weld or whatever you want to call it. But aside from parallax, aside from getting good image quality, you, you do want to be able to have a follow-up on your on your shot be yeah. able to kind of see your I mean does a lot of impact. it boil down to just proper alignment and it's going to depend a little bit on your rifle and you just want to make sure that everything is lined up properly yeah for, like with you the shooter yeah for for years we um when I when I was working more on the tech support side with consumer sales there was always the conversation of like wouldn't these calls be easier if we had a cheat sheet where we could just say, if you have this gun and this optic, this is the height ring you need. Mm -hmm. But because there's so many different stock options, everyone's facial cheekbone structure right. is different. Everyone's built differently. There's just no, there is no like, op, no answer that really kind of can be right all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, then there's some people out there who want to achieve a certain look as well. Mm -hmm. And then you're trying to sort of accommodate that, but you're also the most trying... important part of shooting. Right. But it, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but it is a thing. And so you're trying to be like, well, is there a way that we can maybe achieve this look, but also not have it just be way out of the realm of comfort for you shooting? Um, and, and that is, that is a thing. Uh, Rube, let me ask you this real quick too. We'll 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 talk about ARs briefly here, even though we're over ten minutes. That's fine. We do it all the time. <laughs> um, we'll talk about ARs here now. Usually, an AR we see in like a one piece cantilever mount. It gets it at a proper height to clear rails, clear all kinds of stuff, and we and we know that the stock is usually in line with the rail instead of being swept down a little bit like a bolt. Yeah, gun. Yeah, in line with the recoil system. Yep. yep. And uh, and so we get the optic up a little higher to have a better cheek weld. Um, but yeah, now people are getting these really tall mounts. Like, like what is that? Um, what are those tall mounts for? You mentioned like the gas mask height, night vision. Not everyone is using night vision though. So is there right. really any other reasons for somebody to get these tall kind of like in vogue mounts? Yeah, um, not, not if you don't need it. And I guess like that's kind of a, a vague answer, but, um, in the competition scene, some people are going to them. Uh, simply because it allows you to have your head up a little more upright. And when you're shooting and doing shooting on the move, um, walking and shooting, it allows you to not have to tuck your cheek in so far. Okay. Anytime you, you lean your head down, you start to, your eyes move in your eye sockets. And sure. so when you do that, you can go to a more strained position where you're looking through the top of your eye socket and your eye feels a little bit strained. I mean, it's like looking through the top of your yeah, sunglasses. Yeah, we did the whole podcast like this where uh, like chins were yeah, down just and we're try, up right. at each other. Tuck your chin down and look yeah. straight ahead. Um, aside from giving you a nasty double chin, it'll it'll strain your eyes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I guess the... It does make sense though, and Ruben, I, you know, I don't shoot a lot of three-gun. I don't know if you know that, but... Um, I didn't know that. I thought you were a big, big three-gun guy. But you know, you're talking about you know action shooting, moving shooting, multiple targets, walking while you're shooting. Like It just seems super intuitive that, yeah, you want to have your head up. Like yep. You're... You're probably moving on to that next target even before you're done with the first one. Almost it seems like you like know if you're calling your shots correctly, then yeah, you you've taken your shots and you're moving to the next one. It's like well, I've seen you center. shoot. And I was just assuming you're calling your shots is pretty good. Being in the center of your own body's optic, it's like Ooh. reverse. You know, if you're oh, trying man. to play out there in the peripheries, it's not as yeah. ideal. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I mean, they, they were built kind of for a specific purpose. Um, Eyeballs or what? <laughs> these mounts. These mounts. The oh, higher my mounts. Bad. Okay. Uh, I think I, one point I think both. I think one point five nine is kinda like our standard. So if even if you look at a two oh four 
that's only a half an inch difference, really. Yeah. But it's enough to clear some of the devices that people are using them with um, to get you high, higher to see through the optic. Um, it, either way, it's something that our customers are using. And so, you know, there's there's a lot of options, and it's our job just kind of know what they're for. What yeah. do you like? Um, you know, I, I'll i say this. If if you're running an adjustable cheek piece, it doesn't really matter. Okay, sure. Right. Um, Fair point. Go with, go with whatever's comfortable. If you're running a standard collapsible stock on an AR, you're going to be more comfortable at, at that kind of 1.5, 1.6 height. What if you go prone or something? Yeah, that's where the, the higher mounts can start to make you really crane your neck. Okay. Uh, and so I'm not saying you have an option. So you'd be craning pick. your neck up almost. Yeah, you're lifting your head up like, more. Okay. Because the sight is higher. Yeah. Um, it also can kind of prevent you from getting a good cheek weld. Yeah. Now, running like a Magpul PRS stock or an XLR TAC, TAC light stock or a, a TAC mod stock, you can adjust your cheek piece to Just in, yeah. wherever. So, they, even I, it out. Yeah, not to be, uh, not to give answers that aren't solid, but, you know, it's definitely one of those things where it depends on what you're doing with it. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. I mean, it depends on the rifle. It depends on, like you said, you, your, your build, your profile. Yeah. You, I mean, everything. I mean, just because... You know, just because uh, for years and years, 99% of scopes that were made were MOA doesn't mean it's a better system than MRAD. It just means sure. that there are things that develop and change over time. And the advent of a ballistic calculator with a height over bore input, I mean, it eliminates all the guesswork on what height over bore does for you. It calculates it into your equation. Yep. So it's part of your firing solution now, and you don't even have to think about it anymore. You just have to do what's what's comfortable. And your close distance offset is just going to be... It's there. It's going to be there on every optic. It's just more apparent on some. Yep. Anything that does the math for me, I'm a fan of. <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, okay, even though even though we're over, let's just, this little last thing here. So let's say somebody was listening to this, and they're getting to the end now, and they're like, well, what the H vortex? I still don't know what height rings <laughs> to get. All right. If, if, please disagree with me. If you do, I'd love to hear it. But I would say, generally speaking, in, in all of the ring recommendations I've given here at Vortex, 85 to 90% of them that are going on a bolt gun are medium height. You can, you can almost always bet that that's going to work. Now, provided it's on a traditional style bolt gun, yeah. not like a chassis with a full length rail or something kind of like a little bit more, it's not even outlandish these days. It once was, but it's, not, it's becoming less and less so. I'd say that is generally the case, and if it's going on an AR, then I'd go with like a one-piece cantilever at a at a standard height, yeah. just to be safe. I don't want to go down another rabbit trail, but every manufacturer has a different way of measuring. Our mounts are going to be from the top of your base to the center of your scope tube. Mm -hmm. A low is going to be between 0.75 and 0.85, somewhere in there. A medium is between 0 0.8, 0 0.9, maybe 1.0. Some of our yeah, some of our mediums I think are in the 0 0.92, 0 0.95. Yeah, and we have a range. we have a medium plus too. Uh so that actually is another option. But if you look at like 0.75 to 0 0.85, 0 0.95 or 0 0.9 to 1 and then your high rings are going to be 1.2 something somewhere in there 1.26 I think is kind of a traditional height we use. Yeah. Um yeah, mediums are going to be most applications. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, if you have any questions around that kind of thing, though, we like we said, we answer it all the time, and it never really gets old because we get to talk about all kinds of different guns and shooting applications and all that sort of thing. So give us a call or hit us up in the comments on YouTube or on Instagram. Uh, thanks, as usual, for listening to these. Uh, even when we go over 10 minutes, we will catch you on the next one. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.